Uh, Mark Stevens, author of Adventures in Legal Land, of course, the website, markstevens.net. And I uh, wrote this uh, back in November. Complaints against lawyers. want to give a quick update about what is going on with one of the lawyers mentioned here. Just uh, Melinda Lassiter, they did nothing. Um, just, you know, they just ignored the fact that uh, she, you know, she lied, said that the California court system was not, <laughs> was not adversarial in nature. It was... Um, it, well, she was telling the truth, although it conflicts with their with their uh, public relations, their advertising that it is an adversarial system instead of a inquisitorial. They uh, didn't do anything with Jeremy Lappin for uh, not having any evidence to prove jurisdiction. Carletta Bassano in Maine, they completely ignored it. Wouldn't even tell me whether they took the uh, allegations as true. They just cut off all communication, uh, which is kind of what they do. That's one of the reasons why we were complaining about her. But this is about this woman right here, Kathleen Barry. Kathleen Barry is the one, and I have, uh, I, I did put in here the, the gem of circular nonsense. Um, she is a deputy attorney general in Maryland, and uh, wow, she, um, we have since pulled out <laughs> of the tax court because that's a joke. Uh, the tax court is just a rubber stamp. She was not, she was the one that refused to give. In discovery, everyone, in discovery, she was the one that refused to give the name of the witnesses she planned to call. Uh, so whether you like me or not is irrelevant. Anyone uh, who knows anything about, uh, you know, justice, due process, and court procedure, if you're in disclosure and you're planning on using a witness to support your argument and to make your case, you're supposed to disclose the name. <laughs> and she wouldn't do it. That's uh, when we had called and found out about the custodian of records, which had no personal firsthand knowledge. Uh, and I had actually gotten that testimony from one of the custodian of records. She, with her bosses, ordered the Maryland comptroller not to speak to me anymore. Don't talk to Mark Stevens. He asks questions about facts and evidence. Don't talk to him. So that was, uh, that was quite something. But the complaint to the Bar Association initially went nowhere. And uh, I had mentioned this on one of the shows back a few weeks back, where, uh, now again, I am showing that she is dishonest. She's a liar. She's, she's got a pattern of lying and being dishonest. And they weren't disagreeing with the facts that I presented. They just turned around and said, her behavior, dishonest as it may be, is not a violation of the rules. So I wrote back and I said, well, you, you know, here are your rules that, you know, bringing an issue, you know, bringing things up in court because we were in a tax court at the time, uh, bringing up issues that are not based on fact is a violation of their rules. Who would have thought? A rule against lawyers lying. So I said, you, you know, you either reconsider your decision or I'll take it directly to the boss, the head, you know, the head of the grievance count uh, commission myself. So a week or so later, I get a call from the Bar Association Grievance Commission, and they said that the law, that the the one doing the investigation, the one who denied my complaint, was going to take my complaint directly to the boss. And what I get in the mail, this is pretty cool. Let's see if we can pull this up. What I get in the mail, let's just first go. What I get in the mail is this. I got this yesterday. Uh, Attorney Grievance Commission of Maryland and it's, first, I didn't realize it wasn't addressed to me. It was just, I'm getting a courtesy copy of this. I thought, well, why would I have to supplement it again? But it's about uh, Kathleen Berry Esquire and it's regarding my complaint. Enclosed is a copy of correspondence which we received from Marks, Mr. Mark Stevens. Maryland Rule 16-712 charges the Bar Council with investigating all complaints which come to his attention. We must determine initially whether this matter should be classified as a formal docketed complaint or as one which is not disciplinary in nature. Your response to this matter in writing within the next 15 days will help us make this decision. We expect to forward a copy of your response to the complainant. I can't wait to get a copy of this. Uh, if your response is not sufficient to support a disposition of the complaint, we may seek further comment from you or from the complainant before a decision is made. If the matter is deemed not one of disciplinary uh, in nature, we will advise you in a complaint. Blah, blah, okay. So even if a complaint is docketed, it may later be dismissed without taking disciplinary action. And uh, this was uh, Lisa 
B. Mesrick, uh, who was nice enough to send that to me. She went to uh, this Glenn Grossman uh, on her own, and uh, this is the result of that. Now, I just want to show again, because it is such... This, th- I want to just show the evidence. Th- this is enough. If, if, if the system has any... If, if they really are interested in justice and, and due process and these things and keeping lawyers accountable, because their rules do qu- require them to be honest. I mean, imagine they need a rule that they have to be honest. This, this alone is, should be sufficient to get, what's her, where, you know, where is she? This, this is enough to get this, this should, should be enough to get this woman disbarred or at least, uh, uh, you know, sanctioned pretty heavily because this, this, is, this is typical dishonesty from these lawyers. Now, our position, and I wrote the paperwork for uh, Dennis and the tax court, and I did all the administrative stuff, and the hearing before the comptroller's office is, is on markstevens.net. The entire hearing is there where the agent admitted under oath to not having any evidence to support the assessment. Okay, That's the agent from the comptroller themselves. Now, Kathleen Barry, as the attorney who had no prior contact with, with uh, the agent, who doesn't even work with the Comptroller's office anymore, comes in and is going to defend against the, or uh, uh, file, a, she files this response, uh, and this is from Kathleen Barry. Uh, see, Kathleen Barry, that's her signature uh, right there. Uh, she files this response last year, last fall, and our position has been, based on the testimony of the agents, that there's no evidence to prove the Constitution and laws apply to Dennis. And, uh, the, you know, goes back to the same thing. What evidence do you have to prove that the Constitution and code apply just because I'm physically in Maryland? And, of course, they have nothing but circular logic. And this is an example of that circular logic. Uh, let me see if I can blow this up. All right. Uh, th- and so this is, this is the main thing. This, is a, this was filed in court. So anyone thinks, why are, you, why are you making such a big deal? This was filed in court. So in response to the position that there was no evidence to prove that the constitutional laws apply, this is what she wrote. Further answering, the comptroller denies that it is without jurisdiction and denies that the laws of Maryland and the United States of America don't apply to petitioner in that the laws of both Maryland and the United States do apply and the comptroller is acting within jurisdictional limits. This is her entire defense against our position again, based on over a year of, of, of investigation and a, 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 an hour-long hearing with the agent's testimony under penalty of perjury, that there was no evidence, denies that the laws of Maryland and the United States of America don't apply to the petitioner in that the laws of both Maryland and the United States do apply. Again, her entire argument consists of in that. It's a denial, and then in that, the law is due. There's no evidence. The comptroller is acting within jurisdictional limits. Where is the evidence? And even though we went through disclosure, we, you know, we, we did every, you know, everything we could to get an answer, a straight answer. I, we called. She won't discuss anything on the phone, and she won't respond in writing. Uh, this is all she has. That's it. In that the laws of both Maryland and the United States do apply. That is what, one of the main reasons why uh, I filed a complaint against her with the Bar Association. And anybody with, you know, anybody with, uh, with any intelligence whatsoever can see that this is not evidence. Now, there are some uh, pretended scholars on the Internet that claim that laws are somehow special. You don't need evidence to prove that, that they apply. Well, that has no merit whatsoever. But uh, this just on its own <laughs> it should be enough to get to get uh, Kathleen here, uh, to get this woman here disbarred. Uh, it's dishonest, but that's the way lawyers do it. They don't deal in evidence. They deal in argument. And, they don't, and, and even though they, there are court cases and basic common sense dictates that your argument or your opinion must be based on evidence, they don't think that they have to. Now, imagine for a moment that I put this out. Well... We deny that the laws of the, st- uh, of the state of Maryland and the United States apply in that the laws of both Maryland and the United States do not apply. Now, that's garbage. That's ridic- I don't expect anybody would have a brain to accept that. But this woman and her bosses accepted this. So it took a while to get the Bar Association to finally do something to make her respond to this. But her boss... 
her boss, who I filed the same complaint with, Douglas Gansler and uh, these you know, Brian Olner, have done nothing. They've done absolutely nothing with a the complaint. They haven't even responded to tell me where to go. Um, so hopefully we have, uh, well, hopefully we, this is going to be something that's going to be taken serious. And uh, when I get the response from Kathleen Barry, if we get a response, if she bothers to respond, then I will get that posted. I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to, you know, well worth it, you know, just for the laughs uh, to try to defend her circular logic. And it's nonsense that uh, the laws apply in that the laws apply. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm Mark Stevens. This uh, the, the No State Project, of course, live every Saturday from 4 to 7 Eastern time uh, on LRN.FM and TruthFrequencyRadio.com. Again, MarkStevens.net. Uh, and if you if you want to join me on this, that's I'm glad to remember. If you want to join me on this, uh, you can contact me at Mark Stevens uh, at uh, RiseUp.net, and uh, I can get you the information. Or you can just go to their website, the Maryland. Where, what is it? Um, you you can go to their own website, the Attorney Grievance Commission of Maryland, and you can join me on this because the more people we get to complain against Kathleen Barry. And if you can go, you can go, and right here on the website, we've got, uh, if you go here, uh, you can get a copy of, you can get a copy of this uh, nonsense that Kathleen filed. I got a copy right there. Again, my, uh, my name is Mark Stevens, uh, and uh, it's Mar- the website, markstevens.net.